Hello and welcome back to the lecture of time series econometrics. In this lecture, we are going to cover a very important concept called lag operator. Now, we will see the use of lag op operator, particularly when we are dealing with the uh, higher order AR model or higher order MA model or ARMA model. Uh, the AR characteristics polynomial and MA characteristics polynomial, which we are going to cover in the next lecture. Uh, and uh, uh, Ewell Walker uh, equation is basically uh, to understand all this, we need uh, to understand what is a lag operator. Now, lag operator basically, let's say uh, this is just an operator, uh, it is a very specific function, but we are really not sure about its functional form. So, let's, let's assume that and let's say that when I write this function, it is something or, or operator, it is something like I can write. So, I apply, say, say I have my yt and sorry, I apply my uh, uh, apply the lag operator on yt and what I get is basically yt minus 1, okay. So, I really don't know how exactly L has converted yt into yt, uh, into yt minus 1, but let us assume that this operator precisely does that and we need to figure out the properties of this operator, alright. Um, so, going in the same manner, I can write if my lag operator L does that, I can write, if I apply another lag operator on say, on say yt minus 1, I will be able to get yt minus 2, okay. Or I can actually write, say I, I write it equation 1, I write it equation 2 and I combine both this equation to write L of L of yt is equal to yt minus 2, okay. Now, you can say, well, what if I write L square yt is equal to yt minus 2. You can write anything you want, there is no harm in that, but then uh, we are not sure in this case if our L square is actually equal to L into L or LL. I am not sure about if this is true or not, okay. If my equation 3 and equation 4, the kind of notation I use, if they are true, then my uh, this argument L square equal to LL is basically the algebraic operation of L has to be true, okay. So now let us see, uh, as of now we, we are really don't know uh, whether uh, what is the mathematical form or what is the functional form or what are the properties that the lag operator has, okay. Note again that I haven't multiplied L with yt, okay. I haven't said that L is a polynomial or of any type, neither I have specified any functional form of L up to this point, okay. It is just an operator and we need to figure out what is the form of this operator, okay. So, that is basically the purpose. Now, in the part 2 of this lecture, we are actually going to use the lag operator in our AR1 model and we are going to assume certain mathematical property of the AR1 of, of the lag operator uh, which is not yet justified. So, let us let us see uh, how it looks like. So, our AR, AR1 model is basically something like we write yt is equal to phi yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. Now, as per our notation of lag operator, I can write it as phi l yt plus epsilon t. All right. So, now I take this term on the, on the left and I write yt minus phi l yt is equal to epsilon t, right. And let, now let us assume that L has a, you know, algebraic property and L, you can actually multiply L with yt, though it is not proven yet. So, on that assumption, uh, let me, you know, further take yt to 1 minus phi L is equal to epsilon t or I can write or I can write yt is equal to 1 minus phi l minus 1 epsilon t, okay. 
So that's basically my equation that I get out of, uh, you know, using the lag operator with that certain assumption that lag operator has certain arithmetic property and you can actually multiply L into yt to get yt minus 1. If that assumption is true, I can write this equation. So let me see, this is my part 3. I'm trying to prove if L has any kind of mathematical property. So let me write down the, you know, uh, I just, let us use some known form of known algebraic form and apply that to our yt, okay. So let's say I write this. Now this will be equal to basically 1, if, if L, L has algebraic property, it should be equal to 1 minus L square, right? So I should be able to prove that. So I'll, I'll come to that. So let me first write down, let us take any of these. So 1 minus L and if I multiply, then it will be yt plus yt minus 1. So you see here what is happening is the moment you are applying lag, you are actually shifting one step back, right? So we are like basically shifting back and that is why this operator is also known as back shift operator. So let me write down that also here. It's basically nothing but back shift operator. Back shift operator. All right, so from here, let us now see what we get. If I further multiply the whole thing, then I will have one is yt plus yt minus 1 and then I apply L on yt which means minus of yt minus 1 and then I will have further one lag, one shift means yt minus 2. So which means of course this 2 will cancel out. So what you will have is yt minus yt minus 2. All good. Now, let me actually write that, let me actually apply 1 minus L, 1 minus L square on my yt. So let me write it down, 1 minus L square on yt would be equal to yt minus yt minus 2, right? So which means this, let us, let, let us name it as equation 1 and equation 2. So then my equation 1 and equation 2 are basically saying the same thing. Now if that is the case, then I can write, then I can write 1 minus L into 1 plus L into yt is equal to 1 minus L square yt which means I can actually see that 1 minus or I can write 1 minus L into 1 plus L is basically my 1 minus L square right. So that's basically a proof that it has this arithmetic property. Now, it is just one form I have used. Now you are free to choose any other mathematical form if you want and you will find that same same sort of relationship holds true. So we can say that's a very important property and we can actually see a, uh, a general application of this property in all the things that you are going to do and uh, that is basically the concept of lag operator and uh, we are going to see in the next lecture the application of lag operator in AR model and MA model.